for the first time in more than 400 years, we might see something incredible with our own eyes, a star exploding in the night sky. The star's name is Betelgeuse, and while saying it three times won't summon anything spooky, it might just bring us the brightest light show humans have seen in centuries. Astronomers have been watching it closely. Betelgeuse is about 800 times larger than the Sun. So if it replaced the sun in our solar system, its surface would extend all the way to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant located in the constellation Orion. It sits on Orion's shoulder, glowing red-orange, and lately it's been acting strange, flaring up, dimming, and pulsing in the sky. So what's happening with Betelgeuse? Is it really about to explode? And if it does, what will we see? Could it be dangerous? Let's find out. Betelgeuse is about 600 light years away from Earth. That means the light we see from it right now actually left the star 600 years ago. So, if it exploded any time in the last 600 years, that light could be heading toward us right now. It's even possible that it already exploded and we are just waiting for the flash to arrive. Now, if Betelgeuse does go supernova, it will be one of the brightest and most stunning sights in the sky. It could shine so brightly that we will be able to see it during the day. And it might stay visible for weeks or even months. Because it will be visible from so far away, it's clear that Betelgeuse's supernova will be an event of enormous energy release. Depending on the nature of the explosion, it could even cause significant changes to the environment around the star. With that in mind, will it pose any danger to Earth? Some scientists speculate that supernovae could have contributed to past mass extinction events. Deposits of the isotope Iron-60 have been found in ocean sediment and on the moon. Iron-60 is produced in supernovae and has a half-life of about 2.6 million years. So its presence on Earth suggests that supernovae occurred relatively close to our solar system in the past few million years. Gamma ray bursts from closed supernova explosions occur two or more times per billion years, and this has been proposed as the cause of the Ordovician Silurian extinction event. For example, one of the five largest mass extinction events in Earth's history occurred about 450 million years ago and was characterized by the loss of about 85% of marine species. This event might have been influenced by increased cosmic radiation from a nearby supernova, leading to changes in climate and increased radiation levels on Earth. But fortunately, due to the distance Earth is located from Betelgeuse, there is no risk about it. But if Betelgeuse were in the place of the nearest star to Earth, Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years away, the radiation released in the event of an explosion would be so great that the chance of Earth losing its ozone layer would be huge. The gamma rays and other high energy particles from the supernova could strip away parts of the Earth's ozone layer, leading to increased ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface. After imagining that dramatic scenario, let's understand why Betelgeuse is a star unlike any other in the universe. For example, our own Sun is about 4.6 billion years old and is expected to live for another 5 billion years or so. It burns through fuel slowly and steadily. But Betelgeuse is nothing like the Sun. It's huge, more than 15 times the Sun's mass and much younger. It's only about 10 million years old, which in star years is practically a newborn, but because of its size, Betelgeuse is burning through fuel incredibly fast. And stars that big don't live long. They live fast and die young. Right now, Betelgeuse is near the end of its life. As it runs out of hydrogen, it has started fusing heavier and heavier elements in its core. Carbon, oxygen, silicon, and eventually iron. Iron is the stopping point. Fusing iron doesn't release energy, it actually uses it. So once iron builds up in the core, there is nothing left to keep the star from collapsing under its own gravity. At that moment, things happen fast. The core collapses in on itself and the outer layers of the star crash inward, 
rebound and explode outward in a massive burst of light and energy. That's the supernova. But what happens next depends on how massive the core is. If Betelgeuse is around 10 to 15 solar masses, it will likely become a neutron star, a tiny, incredibly dense object just a few kilometers wide, but heavier than the Sun. If it's closer to 20 solar masses or more, it might collapse directly into a black hole. And here's the thing, we still don't know for sure how massive Betelgeuse really is. One big reason is that we are not exactly sure of how far away it is. Even a small change in distance changes how we calculate its size and mass. And that means we are not sure what kind of death Betelgeuse will have. And that's part of what makes it so exciting. Some scientists think it might even shine as bright as the full moon for a short time. But there is more to Betelgeuse than just brightness. It's also behaving strangely. It spins really fast for a star its size. It completes a full rotation every 20 years with surface speeds around 18,000 km per hour. That's fast, and it's not what we would expect from a red supergiant. So why is it spinning so quickly? One theory is that Betelgeuse swallowed a companion star at some point in its past. Some astronomers have even given it a nickname, Beetle Buddy. That would give it extra angular momentum. Basically, it would make it spin faster. There is some evidence for this. For example, the outer layers of Betelgeuse contain more nitrogen than expected, which suggests that the star's interior has been mixed recently, something that might happen during a merger. Simulations showed that the companion's gravity funneled material onto itself, increasing its mass. Eventually, the companion moved through so much material that it caused friction, slowing down and drawing it inward. What happened next depended on various factors, including the companion's speed, the relative masses of the stars, and how much of the primary star's atmosphere had expanded. The influx of material from the companion star disrupted Betelgeuse's helium core, briefly causing it to return to a hydrogen core fusing stage. However, simulations indicate that this didn't last long, and Betelgeuse quickly became a red supergiant again. Another possibility is that the observed rotational speed is an optical illusion caused by Betelgeuse's turbulent surface. Recent advanced telescope observations revealed that Betelgeuse's surface isn't smooth, but rather bubbling with intense activity. These surface bubbles are massive convective cells, regions where hot plasma rises and cooler plasma sinks, creating a dynamic roiling surface. This convective activity causes variations in temperature and brightness, leading to shifts in the color of light emitted from different parts of the star. As a result, the star's surface appears heavier or bluer depending on whether it is moving toward or away from us. This color gradient created by the turbulent convective cells might have misled astronomers into thinking the star is rotating faster than it actually is. To determine whether this bubbling is responsible for the observed color gradient or if other factors are at play, astronomers are focusing on obtaining higher resolution images and more detailed data. This will help clarify whether Betelgeuse's rapid rotation is real or simply an optical illusion caused by its chaotic surface. We won't know for sure unless Betelgeuse explodes, and then we might see the inner structure clearly. So when is it going to blow? That's the big question, and the answer is… we don't know. Estimates say it could happen any time in the next 100,000 years, but again, because of the 600 light year distance, it could have already happened and we are just waiting for the light to get here. For more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.